basic steps in gene mapping. In brief, the main steps needed to perform a successful study are first phenotype definition. The first step is to define the phenotype that you are going to map. In this step, one must define the clinical parameters and determine and decide what clinical data to collect. It is important to decide what type of analysis to perform whether it is qualitative or quantitative. In a qualitative type of analysis, the assumption is that of whether or not one has the disease or not. On the other hand, in a quantitative type of analysis, one measures BMD. Second, determine that the trait has a genetic component. Third, develop an experimental design and fourth, ascertain families. One must decide what type of families to recruit, whether to recruit SIP payers, extended families, etc. Fifth, collection of biological samples and genotyping. Collection of samples for DNA extraction and genotyping using standard sets of polymorphing markers across the whole genome. Sixth, analysis of data. Parametric or LOD score and or, or non-parametric analysis of genotypic data. Seventh, identification of genomic regions of interest and retesting of these regions. Eighth, fine mapping of genomic regions to identify the critical region. This can be done in two ways, either to increase the saturation of genotyping of the region or analyze the data for linkage and association or by examining the region of interest for genes that might have a biological function related to the trait. Ninth step, identification of physical map and gene identification. Gene mapping by human pedigree analysis. It is impossible to pre-select the genotypes of parents and set up crosses in humans specifically for mapping purposes. By examining the genotypes of the members of successive generations of existing families, the limited data for the calculation of recombination frequencies have to be obtained. Their interpretation is often difficult because a human marriage rarely results in a convenient test cross and often the genotypes of one or more family members are unobtainable because those individuals are dead or unwilling to cooperate. For example, we are studying a genetic disease present in the family of two parents and six children. Genetic diseases are frequently used as gene markers in humans, the disease state being one allele and the healthy state being a second allele. The pedigree following shows that the mother is affected by the disease as are four of her children. The maternal grandmother also suffered from this disease, but both she and her husband, the maternal grandfather are now dead. We cannot obtain any further information on their genotypes, but we can include them in the pedigree with slashes indicating that they are dead. For mapping the position of the gene for the genetic disease, we have to study its linkage to a microsatellite marker capital M, four alleles M1, M2, M3 and M4 which are present in the living family members. The pedigree shows inheritance of a genetic disease in a family of two living parents and six children with information about the maternal grandparents available from family records. The disease allele or closed symbols is dominant over the healthy allele or open symbols. The objective is to determine the degree of linkage between the disease gene and the microsatellite capital M by typing the alleles for this microsatellite M1, M2, etc. in living members of the family. The pedigree can be interpreted in two different ways. Hypothesis 1 gives a low recombination frequency and indicates that the disease gene is tightly linked to microsatellite capital M. Hypothesis 2 suggests that the gene and microsatellite are much less closely linked. The issue is resolved by the reappearance of the maternal grandmother whose microsatellite genotype is consistent only with hypothesis 1. Genetic mapping in bacteria. The final type of genetic mapping is the strategy used with bacteria. The main difficulty that geneticists faced when trying to develop genetic mapping techniques for bacteria is that these organisms are normally haploid and so do not undergo meiosis. Some other way therefore had to be devised to induce crossover between homologous segments of bacterial DNA. They use three natural methods for transferring pieces of DNA from one bacterium to another. In conjugation, the transfer of chromosomal or plasmid DNA up to 
one mega base on length from the donor bacterium to the recipient takes place through physical contact between the two bacteria through a narrow tube called the pilus. The later is called episome transfer. Transduction is the transfer of a small segment of the donor's cell's DNA up to 50 kilobase via a bacteriophage. Transformation is similar to transduction but naked DNA longer than 50 kilobase is transferred. After transfer, a double crossover must occur so that the DNA from the donor bacterium is integrated into the recipient's cell's chromosome. If this does not occur, then the transferred DNA is lost when the recipient cell divides. The only exception is after episome transfer, plasmids being able to propagate independently of the host chromosome. The precise details of the mapping procedure depend on the type of gene transfer that is being used. In conjugation mapping, the donor DNA is transferred as a continuous thread into the recipient and gene positions are mapped by timing the entry of the wild type alleles into the recipient. For example, the transfer of a functional gene for tryptophan biosynthesis from a wild type bacterium genotype described as TRP plus to a recipient that lacks a functional copy of this gene called TRP minus, the recipient is called a tryptophan oxotroph a mutant bacterium that can survive only if provided with a nutrient, in this case tryptophan. After transfer, two crossovers are needed to integrate the transferred gene into the recipient cell's chromosome, converting the recipient from TRP minus to TRP plus. DNA is transferred from donor to recipient in the same way that a string is pulled through a tube during conjugation. The relative positions of markers on the DNA molecule can therefore be mapped by determining the times at which the markers appear in the recipient cell. The markers A, B and C are transferred 8, 20 and 30 minutes after the beginning of conjugation respectively. The entire Escherichia coli chromosome takes approximately 100 minutes to transfer. To be co-transferred during transduction and transformation, Two or more markers must be closely linked because these processes usually result in less than 50 kilo base of DNA being passed from donor to recipient. Transduction and transformation mapping are used to determine the relative positions of markers that are too close together to be mapped precisely by conjugation analysis.